Hello everyone. I welcome you to His Court TV. Um, I would urge you to um, subscribe, um, like, and share our channel to um, colleagues and friends um, to also do the same. Um, this is the only um, channel where you get uh, concrete, valid um, um, content for your history and government studies. We basically uh, focus on, on the WASI um, syllables. Um, today we are going to look at the National Liberation Council, which overthrew the, uh, se which overthrew the, sorry about that, which overthrew the CPP government um, in 1966. And in our previous uh, video or discussions, we looked at the, the the problems or the major problems that the NLC faced um, after they assumed office in 1966. And so today we are going to look at their social and political developments, how they try to solve the social and political issues that they came to meet, or the various socio-political uh, policies that they brought into the country and how that shaped the country. So if you have not watched our previous um, lesson, I would urge you, I have included the link in the description under this video. So you, you click on it in the RPK and then you go and watch. So today we will look at the social uh, developments and then we also look at the for some of the political developments in the NLC. So let's begin and take a look at our lesson objectives for today. So our lesson objectives for today will be that one, uh, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to outline um, the social and political achievements of the National Liberation um, Council. So a question could be asked in this direction, and this is going to be our focus. So I would urge you to um, pay attention to whatever we are going to do um, today. Good. So let's take a look at our first. Uh, we'll begin with the social development first of the NLC. We'll begin with the, with the social development first. So the first um, social development of the National Liberation Council was that the National Liberation Council standardized school fees, you know, uh, they of course standardized schools and also the school fees. You know, a 20 man of course member of a committee was set up by the NLC uh, on April 18th, 1966, and the, the responsibility of the committee was to carry out a comprehensive uh, review of the educational um, system, you know, I mean, from basic to university um, levels. And uh, at the, the committee was chaired by uh, Prof. Alice Quapon, all right? And so after the committee did a comprehensive uh, review, they came up uh, with certain uh, standardizations, whereby, for example, the boarding fees of schools or government schools were reduced or were not to exceed 41 cities 60 pesos per term, right? While fees for day students, those who were day, were also not to exceed uh, 11 cities. So you realize that in the field of education, almost all the various government that came or that has come to power has tried their best uh, to make some changes, and currently our president, Nana Arudankwa Ekufu Ado, has introduced the free SHS, whereby even though there are some challenges, but it is still um, there. The next one was the withdrawal of scholarships. Uh, you know, the NLC uh, reduced um, certain scholarships given to 
um, certain Ghanaian students. And the idea was that these scholarships were, were awarded uh, based on fraudulent grounds, okay? Um, mainly because some of these people, you know, belong to a political uh, side. And, and so they withdrew a lot of the scholarship. I mean, about 877 Ghanaian students who were in Britain and then in the U.S. studying, their scholarships were revealed, I mean, were withdrawn because they felt, or the NLC felt that these scholarships were um, acquired through um, for lent means because they either belonged to, a, I mean, a certain political um, party. Then also the establishment of the Center for Civic Education. So the NLC also deemed it wise to establish a Center for Civic Education. And, you know, the Center was to help Ghanaians to understand and appreciate their rights and civic duties. Because even as of today, in the 21st century, a lot of Ghanaians, a lot of Africans in general, do not really know their rights and what they are supposed to do, their responsibility towards the state. So the Center for Civic Education, which is still there uh, today, was set up by the NLC. Now, the center had K.A. Bougia, who will later become a prime minister at, as its national chairman. And the center organized open lectures throughout the country, uh, trying to install in Ghanaians, of course, selfless uh, public service, accountability, um, tolerance, you know, and, and, and other, other, other stuff. But so this way, the, some of the social development, not all, but some of the social developments that the NLC um, decided to undertake. Um, and so let's move on to the political development. Let's take a look at the political developments. There are more of the social, but you go and, and search for them. Let's take a look at the political developments. Now, one or the first thing that the NLC did was the release of political prisoners. Um, don't forget that uh, I mean, during Nkrumah's regime, we had, we, we had established that Nkrumah introduced the PDA um, Act, the uh, uh, Preventive Detention Act, whereby people who were seen as enemies of the state were imprisoned by uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah without giving any trial. So under that circumstances, we saw that some notable Ghanaians died, you know, Richard Bilamte, as well as uh, J.B. Dankwa. And so there were quite more, a lot of these people in, in prisons. And so the NLC, after um, assuming office, decided to release um, some of these people, almost all of them were, I mean, of course, released. And don't also forget that the PDA was one of the reasons why the Nkrumah or the NLC overthrew the Nkrumah government. Now, let's also look at the provision of aid. The NLC also set up a national relief um, committee, and they were to distribute food and clothing to the ex-detainees ex under the PDA um, Act, and funds were also made available for them to start up small businesses, you know, on a small scale of core businesses. And this was done basically to restore their self-confidence and dignity. You know, some of these detainees had been in prison for a, a, quite a long time, and so they, they did not have any means you know, being in prison for like six years, five years. Of course, the work that you were doing, you will not come and meet that work there anymore. And so what happened was that most of them had lost their dignity, their self-confidence. And so this a relief fund or package was to help all the detainees to, 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 to be able to integrate again, you know, in their, in their communities and so that they can have um, something to rely on, which was a good one. Don't also forget that uh, during Nkrumah's uh, regime, uh, Nkrumah had issues with some um, chiefs, uh, mainly because some of these chiefs were proving to be, um, uh, I mean, political or, uh, I mean, regional chiefs, you know, they, 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 had, they had in their mindset whereby they only championed the cause of their people only. So some of these chiefs tried to, to even 
uh, uh, um, 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 break away from the then Gold Coast, or the, I mean, the then now that we know Ghana. So you we, we realize that Nkrumah distilled some of those chiefs. And so, um, uh, th- I mean, example of such chiefs were also, of course, restored. Their um, stools were given back to them. And so uh, a notable example was Nana Ofori Atta II, the paramount chief of Achim Mebuakwa, who was actually uh, distilled by Nkrumah. You know, his, his stool was given back to him. And so they all in a bit to try and reverse the things that had gone wrong um, during Nkrumah's um, regime. And so we can say that that is all what the NLC tried to do, you know, politically. Um, all the people that Nkrumah had had issues with, the NLC uh, tried to uh, appease them and reverse them. Let's take a look at the next political development. Also, there was a military uh, deployment to cocoa growing communities, all right? So the military embarked on a certain operation, of course, that they called the Operation Yellow Port. And this was to assist in the reconstruction and rehabilitation uh, of course, processes to carry cocoa from rural areas to the cities. So what happened was that, you know, most of the cocoa producing areas were in the forest areas, and the forest areas had no roads to carry the cocoa from the uh, forest or the interior to the coast. And so a lot of cocos were stuck in the in the forest. And so then the the military tried to go in there, you know, in, in an operation called the Yellow Pot to bring all this cocoa from the um um um, um see, uh, I mean of course from the forest to the coast. And this led to a massive uh, reduction in the number of cocoa beans which had been locked up in the growing areas in the country. Uh, you know, today, even today we still have some cocos which are locked up. And I think there was an issue about uh, cocoa roads that were being made, you know. Uh, so we are still, I mean, we are still battling with some of these issues, you know, uh, in this 21st century. We still have areas that do not have roads, but they have cocoa. Again, was the restoration of freedom. Okay, so the NLC also restored a certain freedom, uh, of course, such as the freedom of speech, uh, association, um, press to, of course, Ghanaians. Uh, you know, uh, during the Nkrumah's regime, some freedoms were taken away from the people. You know, of course, some press were, were of course, licenses were, I mean, uh, um, some press licenses, uh, I mean, licenses were revoked, okay? And so, uh, of course, you couldn't also talk anyhow about Nkrumah uh, during, of course, the time. And so all these were uh, uh, freedoms which were uh, tempered with. So example of some of the uh, independent newspapers that uh, were actually had their licenses uh, revoked or prevented from working were the Legon Observers, the Evening Standard, and they were banned by Nkrumah for not to operate in the country. And, but the NOC, after uh, the overthrew Nkrumah, decided to allow all these countries to um, to operate. Uh, I mean, to operate in the country, and mostly the politicians who had also fled. You know who had who had also fled from the country uh, to sought for a political asylum uh, in foreign um, countries were also encouraged to come back and to assist in the development and um, processes. And so basically, these were some of the 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 um, uh, the some of the I mean of course political issues that the NLC tried to. You know to solve. So you you realize that all that the NLC did was to just try and, and then reverse whatever that Nkrumah had done, just so um, they could win the confidence of the people, so that they could win the trust. Don't also forget that one of the reasons why, of course, one of the major problems we stated earlier in our discussion um, in the major problems of the NLC was how to win the confidence of the people or the trust of the people, because they did not have power. Power was not given to them by the people. They took power by force. And so uh, they had to win the, the support of the people. And so we, 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 when you look at all these uh, policies, you realize that they were in a bit to uh, you know, con the people 
so that the people could give them their support. Good. So this is a WASI question 2022. Uh, outline five measures adopted by the National Liberation Council to solve the political problems it inherited. And that is what we have just done. And by way of reminding yourself, of course, the reliefs of the of the ex detainees, of course, granting them um, um relief, you know, and other things that we have talked about, and also allow any for social, I mean, social and economic development in, uh, in Ghana under the NLC um, government. So we've also done the social development under NLC government, and this was in Wasi, 2015. I know that we've had a quite a good time. Um, thank you for your time, and um, let's meet some other time. Um, share, like, comment. We shall meet again. It's Gov TV, first among equals.